guys, Alex here. Today we're going to talk about what computer should you use if you are doing a tech major in college, specifically a computer science major, but basically any tech major. Now, if you really just want to get something that will get the job done, I would recommend a MacBook Air 24 gigabytes RAM. That's like the minimum I would recommend. Now, if you're doing a non-tech major, I think a MacBook Air 16 gigabytes of RAM would be fine, but I would recommend if you're doing tech, if you're doing programming, you need a lot of memory, I would recommend at least a MacBook Air 24 gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you have money to spend and you especially already have a monitor, I'd recommend getting the new Mac mini. So the Mac mini just came out. I've always been a fan of Mac minis. I've had a couple in the past. I'm actually recording this on a Mac mini, one of the older ones. I do plan to upgrade to the new Mac studio coming out, I believe next probably May or June. So I'm waiting for that. But most of you are not going to need that. So 90% of you watching this will not need a Mac studio. But the Mac mini right now, for the first time ever, they actually made it 64 gigabytes of RAM if you configure it all the way up. So basically I would configure this to one terabyte storage and 64 gigabytes of RAM and the highest Mac mini processor, which would be a M4 Pro 14 CPU 20 GPU, which is the best Mac Pro processor so far. It's an M4 Pro. It's not as powerful as a Max or an Ultra, but it's by far the most powerful Pro chip that has been made so far, like by far. Uh, 14 CPU, it's, it's about the same power as an M3 Max chip. So the M4 Pro is very powerful. This will be able to do anything you need to do programming wise. You can have tons of tabs open, basically tons of AI work. This computer would be great for AI if you maxed it out at 64 gigabytes of RAM. Do you need 64 gigabytes of RAM? No, not unless you're doing like a lot of maybe photo editing, like Photoshop, and you're doing a lot of programming. Unless you're really pushing this thing to the maximum, you do not need 64 gigabytes of RAM, but I do recommend at least 48 gigabytes of RAM. And if you do have the funds to future-proof this, I would recommend upgrading uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. So it's only $180 difference to go from 48 gigabytes of RAM to 64 gigabytes. All of you ordering Apple products should always be ordering from their education website. It doesn't matter if you're a student or not, anybody can order from their education website. They do not verify if you're a student or not. So if you guys didn't know that trick, you should always be ordering from the Apple education website. Basically you save like 10 to 20% on your purchase. And this goes for basically every product. And upgrades are a little cheaper, right? Like it would normally be $200 to go from 48 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes, but on the education website, it would be 180 instead of 200. So every upgrade is slightly cheaper. One terabyte of storage should be enough because external storage is really cheap. If you're gonna cheap out on one thing, I always recommend cheaping out on external storage. Although I do think 512 is not enough and that would fill up really fast. So I'd recommend one terabyte. And then if you start filling that up, just get like a little two terabyte external storage, which wouldn't cost you more than 150 bucks, probably maybe $200 for like a really good brand. So still a lot cheaper than upgrading on Apple itself. Now this computer is by far the most powerful Mac mini that Apple has ever released. It's their, basically their second most powerful computer besides the Mac studio. I mean, you can consider the Mac pro as well, but I really think they're phasing out the Mac pro. They're really just trying to make this like the Mac mini, which is like a miniature studio and the Mac studio. I will have a video on the Mac studio when that one comes out later in 2025. I plan to get one of those myself and maybe do an unboxing here. But for the Mac mini, this computer would absolutely a great like eight year computer for the majority of you watching this, especially if you made it 64 gigabytes of RAM, probably be a computer you can use for eight to 10 years with no hiccups, no problems whatsoever. Now, Apple does have a tendency to stop supporting their computers around, I believe the seven year mark or so, but it's still plenty of time, right? Even if you don't get software updates after seven years, this will still be a computer that would likely last you 10 years. Apple builds their product products to last, especially the products that do not have a battery in it. The issue with things like laptops is the battery goes bad, right? The battery is going to get worse and worse and worse. Just like an electric car, a phone, anything, the battery degrades. So when I have an electronic device, I actually like to replace the battery every year, every two years, especially if it's something I'm going to use a lot. But with this, you don't have to worry about that. And that's why this product can actually last eight to 10 years. So my Mac mini, I'm on the M1 Mac mini. It's like the first M series chip Mac mini. Now I also have a laptop and MacBook Pro M3 Max laptop, but the computer I use on my desk still is this M1 Mac mini and I still record on it to this day. So it's still hanging in there. 
It's still doing its job. It's not the computer I do like programming work on. It's not the computer I do school work on. It's not the computer I do any of that stuff for, but like I don't edit on this computer, but it's still trucking in there really well. Like I do record on this computer. I, I do a lot of things on this computer still. It's still hanging in there. I do plan to upgrade to the Mac Studio next year and I'm pretty excited about that. But the Mac Mini is an extremely durable product. And the fact that they came out with 64 gigabytes of RAM, I think is a huge addition a huge upgrade to the Mac mini lineup. And they made the processor more powerful than ever before. Like I thought the M3 Pro was a underwhelming chip, but the M4 Pro with a 14 CPU and 20 GPU is a huge upgrade over any M Pro chip before. So this computer will be able to handle anything you want to throw at it. It's going to be great for AI. It's going to be great for programming. It's going to be great for multitasking. It's going to be absolutely phenomenal. So you can search for reviews too. This is not a review video, but you can search for reviews. They're all over the place. The M4 Mac mini. So M4 Pro Mac mini to be more specific, type in M4 Pro Mac mini and you'll find a ton of videos on people actually really using this thing and benchmarks and real world usage and all of those things. Plus you can actually see what it looks like, the form factor of the M4 Mac mini. And then the M4 Mac Studio coming out next year will just be like a bigger version of that and much more powerful. And I'm assuming that will probably have up to 256 gigabytes of RAM. You might be wondering like, what would you ever need 256 gigabytes of RAM for? Mostly if you wanna run AIs. Now I'll get into that into a future video as this video is not about the Mac Studio. But Mac mini is a great computer. If you already have a monitor or you wanna buy like a cheaper monitor, the Mac mini will be a much cheaper purchase than buying a MacBook. Pro, but if you want to be cost efficient, if you want to save on costs and you're not really to make a big purchase like the Mac mini or a MacBook Pro, then you can, like I said, you can get a MacBook Air with uh, 24 gigabytes of RAM and that will uh, run you a little cheaper than both of these options. And that'll probably most likely get you through college. And then once you get your salary, you can, you know, upgrade your computer. MacBook Air, if you do decide to go that route, I do recommend getting 24 gigabytes of RAM, like I said, and at least one terabyte of storage because the storage does go fast. The 15 inch MacBook Air is, the screen could be a little big, but like, I feel like the perfect form factor is 14 inch, but you can only get that in the MacBook Pro. I do feel like the 13 inch laptops are a little too small for me. Like it's really hard to multitask on those, but some people make it work. And then for the 15 inch, it is slightly big, but like, to hold it on your lap and things like that, it is kind of slightly big, but I do think the 15 inch MacBook Air is the best bang for your buck with 24 gigabytes of RAM. If you're just looking to get through school over the next three, four years, and maybe, you know, your first several months on the job as well. But if you really want to future proof your computer and you really want like a big monitor, I would definitely absolutely recommend the Mac mini, at least 48 gigabytes of RAM, preferably 64 gigabytes if you can afford it, one to two terabytes of storage, uh, one should be fine too, if you're really feeling like you can afford it. And it's a great computer. I'm a big fan of Apple products. I know some people hate on Apple. Some of you watching this video will probably not be Apple people, and that's totally fine. You can find a nice Windows computer too. Basically, the Surface laptop is a great computer if you want to research that, the Surface Pro tablet. Also, there's um, you can build your own computer, which is obviously one of the great things about Windows is you can build your own computer and then put the Windows operating system on it or Linux or whatever you want to do. So you do have that option compared to Apple. With Apple, I've just really fallen in love with the ecosystem and it's hard for me to get off of it. So I might eventually get a non-Apple computer again and just have the best of both worlds. But for now I am on the ecosystem and I do prefer Apple computers at this point. So if you guys really are searching for a good programming computer, a good AI computer, a good computer for college, a good computer to get through your tech degree, a good computer for the future to get through your tech job, then like I said, I really recommend this Mac mini, or you can get a MacBook Pro if you don't have a monitor. MacBook Pro, I'd, the same thing. I'd probably get at least 48 gigabytes of RAM. Just realize that if you use it a lot, you'll have to replace the battery after a couple years if you really want to keep the laptop for like five years. And just realize laptops die faster. Laptops are good for like, I feel like six years max, and that's if you replace the battery. Whereas a good desktop computer like the Mac Mini really could last you a decade if you really want it to. So great computer, computer first a tech degree for school. Highly recommend the Mac Mini but any of the Apple computers will work fine. So you don't need that much power if you really don't plan on having it for too long. The MacBook Air, like I said, with 24 gigabytes of RAM is fine. You can even get by with the MacBook Air on 16 gigabytes of RAM. I just don't really feel like it's efficient enough. You're probably gonna run into some hiccups here and there. So but anyways, guys, that is the video for today. I feel like a Mac mini is a really great computer. The M4 Pro Mac mini, look up a review right now, see if it's the computer for you. I think it's a phenomenal computer. I think Apple has put out some phenomenal computers over the past several years. So, uh, or you can wait for the Mac Studio like I am coming out in 2025. I think that's going to be 
the most powerful uh, Apple computer we've ever seen with, uh, I believe, an M4 Ultra chip, which will be absolutely amazing. But anyways, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for watching my video. If I helped you in any possible way, please like, subscribe, or comment. When you do that, it pushes the video out to newer people who have never seen my channel. So once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you so much.